Welcome back guys to another video. Today I want to talk about interest rates and how they're going to be affecting the market this year uh, in 2022 and how they're going to be affecting growth stocks because those are the ones that have been really tanking 60 to 70 percent down in the past three months alone. It's been quite brutal and you can reflect that with the ARC uh, Kathy Wood fund and you can see it's absolutely hit, 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 hit. like it was 156 and now it's like 80 dollars. Uh, in less than a year so that's pretty um, cool to see so what did I want to show you guys I wanted to show you guys the S&P 500 and you can basically see it's basically in an uptrend it's in a very bullish uptrend it's had a small tiny little correction recently but it's still very close to uh, record highs and why is this it's mainly because of the big caps uh, with the high market weightage like Apple Google Meta um nvidia and the big bigger caps so they're holding up this whole market but underneath this market you can see some fintech fintech names like square uh which owns cash app and that's also been slashed into half i believe in 2018 it was a hundred dollars and now it's 133 dollars so can you imagine in the past four years square stock has only gone up 30 percent obviously it was at 280 but this is a big decline and it's not just happening to square it's been happening to DraftKings. DraftKings is a leader in the sports gambling uh, in that space and fubo tv is also joining that space uh, it's a stock that i like really good uh, and it's been doing really good it's got 1.1 million subscribers uh, last year it had 550,000 subscribers but the issue with these growth stocks are that they're not currently profitable and these algorithms recently have been just mass selling these um, i'm not too worried about them because um, they are doing pretty uh, good in their business so the companies that are doing good in their business i am holding um, but as you can see here was their earnings at $33. I really liked the earnings and it was a beat on the revenue. It was an EPS miss and they were making some losses here. And they're going to be continuing to burn cash. But companies that are burning cash are an absolutely no-no. Or any company with a high PE. Most of these companies don't even have a PE. Um, I like Magnite. It hit a high of $61 about a year ago. And now it's all the way at 15 So I'm not telling you guys to exactly enter the space and go full on into growth stocks but if you want to outperform the market in the long run you want to go with some growth stocks to have in your portfolio to outperform in the long run most money managers are going for um, energy companies like chevron exxon and also jp morgan like financial companies you can always buy one or two of those etfs but uh, this is the opportunity to buy these long-term uh, growth stories and basically you don't want to chase the stock you want the ch stock to kind of chase you and you can see these declines they're absolutely brutal so we should be taking an opportunity of these here's another one i like i like bumble um the economy is opening up um when once the earnings come or a prelim uh, an earnings announcement comes and if the earnings are good there's a good eps and they're almost profitable they're like a, a tinder but a, a lot smaller but they are one of the most famous dating apps here. Beyond Meat, I don't really like their uh, current financials they're reporting, but they did report a great deal with KFC, and it's one of the most shorted stocks in the Russell 2000 recently. Wish is another stock. It's been a bit uh, of a disappointment from its IPO. It was at $31 after its IPO. It's currently one-tenth of its value. It has $1 billion in its balance sheet, but it's not looking good on Google Trends, guys. Um, its uh, sales are going to be down a lot, but I do think that they're trying to cut down their marketing cost, so that's why uh, the sales might be down. But they are going to be getting a CEO uh, before 1st of February, so that's a cool catalyst to look out for. Um, let's just look at some other stocks that I've been recently looking at. Um, there's Corsair Gaming. I know that GPUs have been really, really expensive recently. And I don't know if there's going to be a lot of demand for um, computer gaming items. But uh, as the economy is opening up, more people want to stay outside. But guys, the PE on this is uh, 17. It's come really low. And it's a profitable company. So there is definitely less risk on these ones. So you do want to have a combination of companies that are not making a profit and a comp companies that are making like huge losses. Yes, um, growing revenues fast is important. Uh, the ARC fund, 
I don't know if this is exactly the bottom. No one does. But um, if you want to be in the long term story of companies like Teledoc or Zoom, which I do think have really good business models. Um, t- Zoom is, I think, trading at a 45 uh, multiple PE. Teledoc is unfortunately not profitable yet. Uh, I think they overpaid on their acquisition of Livongo. So it did go up to 292 and it's a bit shocking because I haven't seen such great deals since the pandemic of March 2020 and it is beyond my imagination that we would see something like this. Neo is getting its cars to Europe and America and it seems like companies like Alibaba and Chinese tech companies are uh, easing their uh, restrictions on these big companies. So with the China fear going away, Neo could be a great one to buy an EV stock. It is trading at a market cap of almost 50 billion, but it is less than companies like Lucent Motors, which are not producing many cars right now. Then we've got Stitch Fix. I don't know much about this company, but I just added it to my watch list. You can see this absolutely big run in um, January. Okay, one of my retailer stocks that I like is American Eagle. It is ha- it has a three uh, percent dividend yield and it's making nice profits. Uh, in the pandemic, it did come to seven dollars, but its business model is doing really good. Same as Dix. Uh, I don't know if I have Dix in my um, watch list on Trading View here, but there's so many deals out there, and that's what the problem is. There's too many deals out there. That we just don't know when they're going to bottom. When is the money going to come to buy these? Like Dix is trading at an 8 PE. And its business has grown a lot. Its revenue has grown a lot. And its net income has also grown a, a lot since the pandemic. So these are some of the stories you have to look at. Netflix today announced that it's going to be increasing the subscription prices for its uh, packages in America by $1. And this one has also fallen. Um, here was like this hype behind the Squid Game series. But... 500 this line as a support 474 it seems like is long-term support of it so it could gap down a bit more further and it's maybe trying to create a support here we're, we're gonna have to see but in the long run who cares guys interest rates are not going to stop these companies from growing interest rates are still really good low right now they're probably going to be around one to two percent for the next five years and those are historically low interest rates and the the main reason why these stocks are falling are based on fear and these algorithms taking advantage of this weak sentiment. So basically what happens is when interest rates start to rise, uh, investors' appetite for risk declines because they rather have money in their bank and earning that interest. So they want to take less risk. And that's why um, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin have been also falling. And um, that's pretty interesting. But um long run there are too many opportunities to just avoid uh, oh my god i can't believe i forgot so far one of my favorite fintech plays uh it's been going between 13 and 22 for the past three times and its earnings were pretty good they also raised capital over here we're gonna have to see in the next earnings and if they, they can get their banking charter um, there are many more companies falling i can name you robin hood 70 percent from its uh highs Basically, any IPOs have been going really horrible. C3 AI is one. This is one called Hyzon, which had a short seller report. So this is a bit speculative, but it is into the hydrogen uh, space for making uh, commercial vehicles. So I think that's about it, guys, for this video. Um, If you guys have any questions, let me know down below in the comment section below. And Upstart is a great buy at this price, and I'll see you guys next time.